This is the best defense for bunch tight end that I've been able to cook up in the last year. What's good guys, my name's Cody and I wanna thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If this is your first time visiting my channel, my channel focuses in on helping people become a better Madden player. So if you are looking to get better at this game, we upload videos every single day that can help you take your game to the next level. So be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss any of these videos. Now guys, Bunch Tight End, in my personal opinion, is one of the most difficult formations to defend because it's got an everything beater. It's literally ha it literally has a play in it that can literally bomb every single coverage literally every time no matter what you do it's a one play score if they get time in the pocket the other reason why in my opinion bunch tight end is so good is because the the animation that you get from pa boot over the blocking animation that you actually get it really is the best blocking you can pick up every blitz with the pa boot over blocking animation so it's what makes uh bunch tight end so good so in this video i wanted to spend a few minutes uh, and talk with you a little bit about how we can combat that so uh, what i like to do is i like to go ahead and have my auto flip on i love baseline against bunch tight end because of the fact that we're going to be able to kind of disguise some of our coverages and things like that so i'm going to put baseline on ball and air defense is going to be to play ball option defense is on conservative and then really important your flats are going to be on 30 your or, um, or your uh, curl flats are going to be on five or and, and again i'm going to give you kind of two ways to run this or set this up so uh in the first example we're going to do the curl flats are going to be on like 15 maybe 20 like a little deeper your flats are going to be on default and then your hooks are going to be on five okay this is kind of the first rendition and then i'll show you a second one if we have time so uh what we're going to do here is we are going to go into our audibles and we're going to set the cover four quarters as an audible and then the play we're going to be coming out in every single time is the double safety blitz now the reason why we come out in double safety blitz is to help with the seams and to help with some of the um the quick hitting it, it very much so disguises the coverage very well um you don't have to come out in double safety blitz but in my opinion it's the best way to do it out of nickel normal because you bring the safeties down into the box and then you're able to adjust out of that so uh what we're going to do here is we're going to put uh we're going to put scotty miller uh right here we're gonna put uh chris godwin whoops, whoops, whoops i'm sorry we're gonna put mike evans here scotty miller here and then godwin here okay pa boot over here's the bomb okay and i'm not gonna really belabor the point i just want to like here's here's the bomb i've talked about it on my channel we have an ebook on bunch tight end that you can get there's a link to that in the description of this video the bomb is basically this we're going to block our tight end and we're going to do one of two things we're either going to streak and slant just like this or we're going to do that setup those are the two ways that this bomb works you either do it like this or you do it like this okay that's how the bomb that's how the bomb works okay and my player it's glitched but you see here those are the two ways to run it okay so i'm going to reset my play and i personally think that this way is the best way to run the bomb because it gives you the best protection there's no blitz in the game that can get in they have to go use the bomb if they don't it's a one play touchdown if they do go use the bomb most of the time the slam is going to be wide open so here's what we're going to do to combat this we are going to audible to the cover four quarters defense as you can see that right there we are going to pass commit that is an absolute must against bunch tight end and then what you can do a couple different ways to skin a cat but what i like to do is i like to pinch my d line crash my line out really important you're going to get a really good two-man rush out of this you're going to qb spy and damakun sue here the left of screen defensive tackle and then you are going to bluff blitz vita vea the reason i like to bluff blitz vita vea is because if the running back goes on some kind of weird little route he will play that fairly decently and then the guy that we're going to actually use her on this play is going to be antoine winfield we're going to stand kind of right in here and then we're just going to shade our coverage down. I like to pinch my linebackers too. The other thing you could do if you want to is you could shift your linebacker to the right. It's a little bit more of a basic look. And then as you see, this is kind of what we've created. Essentially, it's cover four quarters, but you have zone drops on. The reason we want our zone drops to be turned on is because it significantly helps with um, the way that the flats play. It turns off the match somewhat, but you keep some matching principles. We're gonna show kind of how that works in this. So uh, at the snap of the ball, we are going to roll here. And you see there's the rollout. We're gonna kind of follow in this general area. And as you can see, that quarter is going to go match this deep post. Now, again, I kind of butchered my setup there. He didn't get quite back as much as I wanted him to. Let me show it to you one more time. Let me back it up a little bit and I'll show you. Um, the one thing I will say is if you come out against boot over, uh, I will tell you that one thing that I would recommend is as you just saw, uh, what you can also do 
to kind of help yourself a little bit is make sure that that quarter zone is a little bit back on that on that tight end side. Like you don't want him all the way down as the double safety blitz brings him. You might want to just kind of manually move him back just a little bit. Make sure you pass commit. The other that's another thing reason why PA bit overworks so well is because you see the pass commit uh, really messes people up. So uh, here this is um, this is them backed off, and I'll show you that what this looks like. So let's say you kind of set your defense up like this, and then it's the exact same adjustments. It's just we didn't come out in double safety blitz. Okay. So you see here, this is how the, the play works. And then this is actually the better way to run the bomb because you're on this, if you're on this side of the field, it's a lot better. Uh, but anyways, and I'll just, I'll just be quarterback. I'm not even going to use or anything. So I'll just show them. So this is the way the bomb or the play works. See how the quarter matches him? That's huge. See that right there? You get that match concept. And that's what I was trying to point out. If he's not, if he's, if he's too far up in the box, you won't get that matching uh, that I just got. However, I do really like to bring, I do really like to come out in the double safety blitz. I would just suggest maybe manually backing him off just a smidge. The reason why I like coming out in double safety blitz so much is because it significantly helps any kind of streaking concepts. It also helps, um, they will defend things that you maybe never thought they would. Let me give you an example. So let's say, for example, they run an inside switch or they run even PA boot over, for example. They do a really good job of defending the crosser uh, whenever he comes across. So that's something that you, you know, you just might want to kind of tuck away in the back of your mind. Now, the other thing that we can do or the other way that we can defend this uh, formation is by doing this. We can go into our coaching settings and basically you got two things with bunch tight end in my opinion. You got the major bomb and then you have kind of the everything beater uh, which is the bunch tight end P but over base setup. Those are the two major setups that you have to worry about. So what we're going to do now is once we've kind of established that they can't bomb us every play, we're going to put our curl flats on five or ten. I would recommend uh, ten but again we'll show you know it's just kind of a weird the way the formation works is just a little glitchy my opinion but anyways uh you can put these on five or ten and then put your flats on 30. this is how we're going to stop a crossing route so uh we're just going to run the basic version of pa boot over and what you're going to see here is we go to double safety blitz we audible to cover four quarters now like i said what you might consider doing is just take this guy right here and just back him up to here like just do something like that okay uh, but anyways, you got to go about your deal. You set up your coverage. But what we're going to basically do is everything is going to be the same. The only difference is we are going to put our uh, outside uh, corners into uh, a – whoops, I don't know why that's messing up. Uh, we're going to put these outside guys into clouds. So you see there, there's 30-yard clouds on both sides of the field. And then you have deep – you have a, a quarters on, on uh, the middle of the field to take away any kind of streaks that they're going to do of the scene. If they motion, if they motion somebody from left to right, my personal recommendation is to go ahead and just leave the court, the quarter uh, defender. Uh, let me just. Sh uh, so, anyways, we'll just show uh, P of it over real quick, and then we'll talk about uh, some things. So, anyways. I'm not going to really use or anything. I just want you to watch how this is going to work. The quarters will basically match the skinny post over the top. The worst thing right there is that little drag. That's the thing that you've got to guard yourself. But as you can see, they can't throw they can't throw that standard crosser that most people like to throw because you've got a 30-yard cloud there. Now, I want to spend just a couple more seconds with you today uh, talking a little bit about uh, kind of the philosophy behind bunch tight end and why uh, I like two different styles of approach. The first one is actually probably my preferred style of approach when defending this. And the reason why I would rather defend it like that is because I think it's going to be more consistent for you in terms of you're going to be able to stop the bomb but you're also going to be able to have a pretty decent success against the crosser and that little uh, that little slant route that I just showed you. And the reason I'm going to show you why uh, in this next segment here. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to come back out and bunch tight end, PA boot over, and then on defense we're going to go back to those same adjustments. We're going to put our curl flats now are going to be on ten. Our hooks are going to be on five. We're going to put these on default. And the reason why we're going to do that is because when we come out and we audible to the cover four quarters, what you're going to notice is these when you audible to this cover four uh, quarters style defense and we hard flat, or we could shade down and up and cloud flat, it's up to you. Uh, but what you're going to see, we'll move this guy back just a little bit. And the reason why is just to help with the bomb. Uh, again, one thing, one other thing you can do is you can spotlight the, the receiver on that side there if you want to kind of get a little extra, extra uh, help. 
Um, we've got good defense for the run. You see very balanced run defense. Got a heavy box count. Like we're in a decent position. Uh, but what you're going to see now against the pivot over is now you have this base aligned quarter zone on um, on this on the tight end side. Okay. And so what you're going to see is because he's not pressed up, but he is baseline. Watch how he defends this crosser. Um, occasionally he'll actually play it. You see right there, they try to throw that. See how he's in that area? If you are in mutt and you have a guy with high zone coverage, he is going to play that really, really well, okay? He is going to play that really, really well, okay? Um, so, and then last little piece of this segment here is to talk a little bit, just one last time about the bomb. So like I said, come out in double safety blitz, uh, pinch your D-line, hard flat, and then you're just going to kind of set up your, your coverage. So you got it like that right there. And then what you want to do here, um, you know, what you can also do on this on this uh, backside is don't be afraid to put, you could put that guy on the left side in a purple zone if you wanted to be a little bit better against some of the flooding concepts they can do to the trip side. Most people that run bunch tight end don't really worry to flood the left side. They're either trying to bomb you or they're running PA boot over almost every time. So anyways, that being said, uh, here is the... Here is the other setup of this bomb, which I think is much significantly worse. Uh, but now you see we have an outside quarter to take the running back. We have the inside quarter. And then you're going to see here uh, how this works. So again, here's the bomb. You kind of follow up. But if you notice that quarter, see that right there? See how he turns and runs with him? Mo almost any other coverage that you try, he will not do that. He will dumb out every single time. And I'll show this in instant replay. Um, and again, this is why I recommend to go ahead and back him up. Just you know, back him up a little bit, because because he, he's got, he does take a second to decide what he's going to do. But if you just watch this right here, snap of the ball, he's going to be here, and then what you're going to see right there, see him turn and run with him. That to me is absolutely critical, and that's the best way that I've found up to this point in the season to be able to slow down and uh, and to suffocate bunch tight end. Now what we force him to do is beat us. Um, the beauty of this is what we force him to do is we force him to go to something like a curl flat corner uh, play, for example, if I can get to it here. Uh, we, we force him to go to something like a curl flat corner, and we'll, let me show you how this works. And then now what they have to do is, you know, they basically have to flood consistently. So as a user, I know that, right? I know that. So I don't have any responsibility in the middle of the field. So, like, let's say they do something – you know, some kind of basic thing like this. This is a very basic concept. It's something that a lot of people like to do at a bunch tight end. What you're going to see here is I'm free to come over here. I'm not even going to show that, but I am free to go user it. also want to show this, though. The outside quarter, because it's a cover four quarters, he does give it up, but it doesn't give it up every time. I will tell you, he does not give it up every time. If you ever want to kind of make a play, what you can do is you go to that 30 yard, you can put the 30 yard on that side, you can have the other guy, and then you can kind of go with that setup. So that's why you use those two kind of defenses together uh, to be able to stop this offense. But anyways, guys, uh, I just want to thank you for watching this video. I really hope it was helpful. I've been labbing a ton about how to contain bunch tight end, how to stop some of these compression sets. This is the best defense that I have found up until this point, other than some of the stuff that we've talked about in our defensive eBooks. If you've not picked up my Patreon membership, I would really encourage you to do that. The reason why is because by joining the Patreon membership, you're going to get immediate access to every single ebook that I have released so far in the Madden season, which right now we've released 13 ebooks, eight on defense and five on offense. You're also going to get instant access to all my exclusive tips, which I've got a ton of those over there. And you're going to get access to any ebook that I release while your subscription is active. It's 10 bucks a month. You can cancel whenever you'd like. But I think it's the best deal right now in the community because you get so much material. You're going to be able to just devour it. And I will tell you from people that I've talked to when they've joined the Patreon, they've, they've become better players. Bottom line is they've become better players because any anytime you buy an ebook and you actually kind of go through and learn the system, you really do become a better player because you learn how the offense works. Even if you don't even run that playbook, it does help you, in my opinion, become a better player because you understand concepts and you can apply bunch concepts to trips, to you trips, to whatever. So I would encourage you to join the Patreon. There's a link down in the description below. You can sign up today for just 10 bucks. And again, as soon as you sign up, you're going to get instant access to everything that I've released so far in the Madden season and everything that I'm going to release while you're still an active Patreon.